Hello everyone, it's Quick Flash. Today I've got a tuning video going over black box, log, black box logs and how to use them with Emu Flight. Um, kind of some different tips and tricks you can use. Because obviously Emu Flight does things a little bit different than, say, Beta Flight or Clean Flight. And as such, um, you know, looking at the logs, it's more or less the same, but there's a few little tricks that'll make things easier for you if you're using emu flight um, and that really mainly these tricks come down to us not running our own black box log viewer and we're just using the beta flight black box log viewer and so some of the data things show up wrong and whatever else so anyways let me continue here i asked some people in the emu flight facebook group if they could send me some logs and Tell me what sort of thing you'd like me to look at in these logs. So I'll be looking at these logs for the first time with you guys. Now this guy, Paul Fow, or I don't know how to say his name, but Paul reached out to me. Um, he had some earlier logs. I'm not going to look at these. He said they were flying pretty good. Um, he said that he updated and that um, he had some issues. He updated to 3.1 and put IMF 230, so he's flying a Helio or Strix F10 flight controller. And um, he has some oscillations. I also heard him say that when he did update, he increased his PIDs a fair bit. Um, so that might have something to do with it. So anyways, I'm going to hop into the log, show you some of these things. Let's see. Yeah, this is the one. This is his log. So as you can see, nothing's pulled up right now. Well, the first thing that I'm going to show you when looking at these logs is the letter H on your keyboard. Now, if we give that a press, this pops up. Now, first thing you want to notice is this information is wrong. Okay, this first part that says Emu Flight, that's correct. 3.7, that's totally wrong. Like, Beta Flight just went up to 3.5, Butter Flight was 3.6. Why is Emu Flight 3.7? Now, the reasoning is we have to trick the black box log viewer to show the logs more correctly. They don't show things entirely correctly still, but if we had it display the correct version, it would show things wrong. So what can you see here? Uh, controller type legacy, you can just ignore that. Rates type doesn't want to show up for whatever reason, but to be honest, that's not the most important thing. Your PIDs, they do show up correctly, which is very nice. Your angle PIDs don't though, so that's kind of annoying. None of this shows up. Now that shows up your RC smoothing, does show up, kind of nice, your D-shot shows up. Um, your filters do not show up in here, and so that means that um, some people are like, oh, the black box log is broken, it's not showing my filters. Well, it's only kind of broken. So we continue scrolling, okay, you can see all the things we've turned on. Now, one thing to note is this anti-gravity being turned on actually is the dynamic filter. It's just another bug to be aware of. This stuff is correct over here though. And the debug is also correct. Now, as you can see, there's this big gray area. Now this is all the Emu Flight specific settings like TPA. We've split up TPA into P, I, and D. So you can see that all there and the math's a bit different than beta flights. I'm not going to get into that, but here you can see all the different settings, like your rate sensitivity, you know, your rate dynamics, your PID level PIDs, so your angle mode PIDs, your D-term filters, we've split it into three axes, Witchcraft, Smart Smoothing, Feathered PIDs, Emu Boost, I Decay, um, I Term Rotation, I don't know why that doesn't show up, but hey, uh, Throttle Boost, Gyro Low Pass, Filters, the IMUF version, low pass, other things, and then actual version. This is a nice part. This actual version tells you the actual version number. So up here, it says that this is the version. It's wrong. Um, it's not correct right there. That's just wrong. This, however, the last thing on there is the actual version number, and that displays it correctly. So if you want to see some of this information better, you have to hit H, scroll down here, this will show you some of these other things. <laughs> now, as he said, 
He's flashing, he has oscillations. So, what I'm first going to do is turn off the smoothing. And now the Expo can be nice or not. It really just depends. But the smoothing, I'm not a fan of. So, first thing, I'm just going to be lazy and grab roll, pitch, and yawn. I'm using the latest configurator. Well, not configure the latest black box explorer. So now we can scroll a little bit. You can see here there is some definite, definite vibrations. Definite. As you can see, there's quite big ones there. You get it on roll and pitch, not on yaw. Keep scrolling. And then you see here some much smaller oscillations. And one thing to notice is these small oscillations, these are things that if you turn on the smoothing, they kind of disappear. Now, something to note is when you turn on the smoothing over here, they pretty much stay there. So kind of a rule of thumb, something to think about is, let me go back to this noise, is when you're here, and this is the D term, these yellow ones, so you can see that the D's freaking out. If when the smoothing is on, it kind of disappears. That's something that filters can take care of. If, however, it's something that, you know, like over here, where it's just oscillating, and it doesn't disappear when you click, when you, know, when you turn smoothing on or off, that's something that is not filter related. And messing around with your filters is not going to fix that. This is either um, hardware, you know, something physical, or something else. Um, yeah, now to get a better picture of things, you know, here's what the gyro is doing. You can see it's that blue line, it's wiggling around. If I click on it, it'll pop this up, and this will show me all the noise. So you can see here, it is quite clean. Like, that is very little noise. <laughs> so you can see that these vibrations are such low frequency that we just can't tune that out. It's not something you can tune. And even if I increase this, which increases, you know, how much we see everything, you know, it's, it's fairly clean. Like, we're never going to want, here's 100 hertz, we're never going to want to put filters down here much below 100 hertz. Even if you put a filter at 65 hertz, like, that's about the lowest you're going to want to go. And that's not going to affect this. It's just not. Now, one thing that's nice in this newer version of the black box log viewer is you can actually look at throttle and vibrations. So, something we can see here is this, like right where my mouse is. I hope you can see that. But right here, this is the motor vibration. So all of these lines coming straight across, that's just a bug in the way this works. So you can kind of ignore the lines going across. Just forget about that. And look at this. You can kind of see here there's more noise here. Now this is very evidently um, throttle and your motors. So this is the motor noise coming right up here. And something to note, as I said before, is in version 3.1, anti-gravity is actually the dynamic filter. However, right now there's a bug which will get fixed soon. Well, it's been fixed. It just needs to get official. Soon we're going to release a new version of Emu Flight, not 0 0.4, but just another 0 0.3 release. And the dynamic filter will work on Helio Spring and Strix F10 flight controllers. Um, so for now, um, don't worry about it. It just doesn't work for you. <laughs> so this noise, it's not a whole lot, to be honest. But something you can note here is this blob of noise there kind of looks like some frame resonance or some other harmonics, especially just because as you increase the throttle, which is moving up, as you increase the throttle, it just disappears. And so because of that, that's going to be some sort of, you know, frame resonance right there. And that's at about 20% throttle. We come over to here. And I change my debug. Get rid of feed forward because we don't even have that in Emu Flight anymore. I go set point throttle. 
you can see here the throttle's actually over 50%. So this isn't, these vibrations here don't appear, oh, let me turn off the smoothing. These vibrations, they don't appear to be from the, um, yeah, from that frame resonance there, because that's at about 20% throttle. And we can see here, the throttle here is about 56. So these two are not correlated. And that makes sense because this frequency is about two, it's, it's around 250 hertz. And 250 hertz is not going to look like this. This is much, much lower. <coughs> so that tells us that side of the picture. Now something to notice is when you turn Expo on and off, you can, you can really get to see a difference here. So the Expo, it really exaggerates anything near the center and makes, you know, larger movements kind of just look a lot less impressive. So if you turn off the Expo, you get a more linear picture of everything. Um, so I generally prefer to have the Expo off, but if you really want to see some vibrations near the center, because if you're just hovering or just doing slow forward flight, little vibrations near the center, that's what's going to be what... Blah, blah, blah. Let me say that again. So if you're just doing forward straight flight, just cruising, and there's little vibrations near the center, that's what's going to show up in your HD feed. However, little vibrations out near the end of your movement, that's not going to show up as much. So the center is more important. So there still is use in using Expo, but not always. And I just am not a fan of the smoothing um, turned on. Um, so yeah, that was what roll looks like. Let's take a look at the pitch gyro, see if that's somewhat similar. Yeah, you can still see right here. It's got similar vibration. Let's see if that shows up. That's, here's yaw. And on yaw, that vibration's not showing up. So that could very well be some sort of frame resonance. But in each of them, you can see the throttle. And if we look at the D term, you can really see the throttle range up here. Right there, you can really see it. If you go to yaw, you can still see it. That's about all that you're seeing. So my first recommendation would be lower your yaw D. I'm still not a fan of the defaults for Helio Spring um, as far as PIDs go. But that's just the way it is. I would recommend lowering your derivative or your D term on yaw. There's no need for it to be up at 20. And if you look at the graphs here, you can see that most of the yaw noise, it's not down here at, you know, around zero or it's a really low in movement range. It's way up here just as, you know, motor noise. Even if we just come and look at it as a frequency, yeah, there's all this noise up there. You know, if you want to come back and look at things, get a different picture, look at the um, yeah, pitch gyro and the roll gyro, you can see that there is this spike right here. This largely unhappy spike near, you know, here's 100 hertz. This is a bit under 50 hertz. You have a spike there. which you can actually you can actually calculate some stuff. There we go. So by pressing I, I was able to put a timestamp on the data. So if we want to line this up, let's get a full wave in. So a wave is from peak to peak or Anyway, so this is a full wave in 0.8 seconds. So, to show you how simple this can be, 0.8 seconds, 2 hertz. And that's not what I want. Um, 
cycles per second. There's point. No, there's. Okay, this isn't what I want. I'm gonna have to edit this out. Hmm. Okay, back with you guys. So, what I'm going to do here is analyze the frequency of these vibrations. So, if I hit M, that creates a marker. I pull it all the way over here. So, you can see that time distance is about 20 milliseconds, which is 51 hertz. Okay, these vibrations are about 50 hertz. Now, I come back here. Oh, look at that. You see this spike? That's about 50 hertz. So we know exactly where this spike in noise is coming from. It's coming from these vibrations that we can see here. <coughs> so let's just quickly scoot around, see if we can find any more of those vibrations. Here we go. Here's some more. Kind of nasty looking. I hope we bump into some more of them. Look at that, when he goes up to full throttle near, wait, where's his throttle? Okay, this bottom line throttle. He's down here at zero throttle, no problem. Here though, his throttle's about 25%. And as we saw earlier, <coughs> as we saw earlier in this frequency versus throttle, right there at about, you know, that 25% throttle area, that's where most of this noise was occurring, most of this um, oscillation that's going on. And as we continue, we can see more of it. Here, however, it's at about 66% throttle. So it's not something that's just limited to only, um, you know, the 20% throttle. Yeah, so as we continue to look, we can still see it popping up all over the place. Um, yeah. So, 
looking at that, I'm going to find a few flips that he does. So here's one flip. Um, kind of slow. Let's find a better example. Okay, that was just some throttle and some vibrations. Um, oh, this looks like still quite a slow flip. There we go, let's turn that off. That'll give us a better picture of what a full quick flip looks like. In the log, this is a video I'm actually going to have to edit. Ugh. <clears throat> okay, here, you know, there's somewhat of a flip on pitch. So let's just take my black box log just freeze. Okay, no, it didn't. We're back. And it's cringing. Okay. You gonna work now? There we go. Okay, so you can see here P. You can see how it's bumping around. The eyes not doing a whole lot as expected. D terms also jumping around a bit. Now, something to help is I'm just going to replace. And before I do that, I'm gonna click out so I can see everything. So if I do the graph setup with just this gyro pitch, it's going to remove all the other graphs. So I'm going to come here and do is right where it has feed forward. I'm going to change that to set point pitch. That'll give me a better picture of where the set points at on pitch. So let's go back here. Look at pitch again. Something to note that you'll probably want to change Paul is your set point quite bumpy if you can see that. Now if I come into here, your current um, filter settings for your RC smoothing, um, it does look like you do have a filter turned on, which is the better version. And just a quick hint to everyone that doesn't know, Emu Flight does have a wiki this website you go to the emu flight github it'll be up here um, I can put the link in the description of this video but if you go here you click on RC smoothing all that you need to do and this is the one I would probably pick up for your case is this just take this copy and paste that in your CLI and then possible disable your ADC filter in OpenTX. Um, it just works a bit better. UAV Tech has a video on that if you want to hear about it in greater detail. But for now I'm going to say you're probably going to want to change your RC smoothing to filter. Um, just put that in the CLI. And the main reason is as you can see this PID P, you see how your P term is just jumping up and down. That's because your set point is jumping up and down. So your P term is just whatever your error is, which is the difference between your set point and your gyro. The error just times a multiplier, whatever your P term's at. That, so more P means more multiplier added to the P term. Well, more multiplier added to the error. So that's all that it is. And so as your, you know, as your set point is jumping like this, your P term's also going to jump. You see there's a big jump here. And then it sort of stops, the gyro catches up, jumps again, causes, you know, and it just causes this jumpiness that you could fix with a little bit of filtering. And then this jumpiness in your gyro leads to a bit of a jumpiness in your D term here. Although you can see it's quite smooth right here, it's quite filtered. You know, the D term's doing fine. Um, so that's not really a problem there. Um, you know, as we can see, the biggest problem throughout all of this, yeah, and you can see here again more of that jumpiness. 
which some better filtering could fix. Um, yeah, let's go back closer to the start. There we go. There's a good example of it. You're running into this, and I'm sure you want to know how you can stop this. Generally, if you have noise, way down low. And we used the mark tool to find that the noise was about 50 hertz, so about right here, that spike. You know we want to pull up roll because it shows up worse on roll. Well, right there, we can still see it. No, it's really kick it out there. Yeah, you can see it real bad now when I turn on Expo. <laughs> if you want to be getting rid of this, this problem, um, you know, this is a PID problem and not so much a filtering problem. When you start to see this, um, well, occasionally it could be a filtering problem. When you see this, um, if it's a filtering problem, <coughs> it's because you're filtering too much. Um, that's because the more you filter, the more noise gets let through. Not more noise. The more you filter, the less noise gets let through, but the more delay you have. And if you delay the signal too much, you can end up creating a feedback loop in itself. The other time you can run into a feedback loop is if your PID gains are too high, then your P term will feed into your D term, and your D term will feed back your P term, and you'll just end up oscillating as they'll both feed into each other and they'll start to create a positive feedback loop where they grow. And that's exactly what we can see over here as it starts off with really nothing and then it starts off real small and it builds up and it gets to about you know this level of oscillating. Um, and that's because you know these terms they start building off of each other and kicking each other up and feeding into one another. And that's not what you want. <coughs> so something that I would suggest here, if we look at your filters, your D-term low-pass filter, it's at 65 hertz, and your D-term low-pass 2 is at 250. Now, if we just want to take a look at your D-term here, there is a spike of noise here. <coughs> now, I would just suggest you turn on the dynamic notch, just kill that. Um, as it would kill all your, you know, your gyro noise near there. However, that's not currently working. It'll be fixed for Helio flight controllers in a little while. So for now, I'm not going to suggest that. I am, however, going to suggest you increase the <coughs> cutoff. You increase this lower cutoff. Move it up maybe to 90, even 100. Decrease this upper cutoff down to maybe 200 or 150. See where that goes. That'll help remove some of the delay that you're having from filtering so low, which can lead to, you know, if your D term is lagging behind too much and your P term's not lagging at all, then it just makes it easier for the two to fight. So that's one thing I would suggest. If you just look here at, oh, this is the gyro, nice. If we just look here, you know, the D term. Yeah, it looks like such as the big spike in noise there. So yeah, so moving the lower, the upper filter from 200 down to like two, from 250 down to 200 or 150 or so, that'll bring the low pass filter down here and it'll start cutting this out more which will be helpful won't do a ton about this lower frequency stuff but that's something you're gonna have to you know look at things other than filters to fix unless you are just over filtering and then here as well you have some noise up there and if we look at your IMUF settings <coughs> they're set up like such um, you could really increase your Q values. Probably bring those up to 6,000 or so, maybe even a little higher. That might help a little bit. Um, with these kinds of oscillations, you're probably, your best bet's going to be to decrease your W. I've seen that help with oscillations like this 
um, sharpness, I'd leave it the same or raise it. Um, that'll probably help with you know, some of the gyro oscillations running into. Um, if, if that combination of changing your filters doesn't help and reducing your D-term on yaw, you're going to want to almost get rid of this. I'd run five or less. Um, <clears throat> what you're then going to want to do is decrease your P, your gains, both your P and D. Yaw is pretty clean. You could even increase your yaw gains. More so the P. You can probably raise your P up to 80 or so. You're not having any problems with your yaw. And most rigs, similar to what you're running, can handle that. Um, but yeah, perhaps lower your pitch. Pids to be closer to roll. Make the derivative lower. And, you know, increase your filters because there's not a ton. I think that really most of your noise is kind of being generated by this. And getting rid of that will help. Um, fixing your RC filters will help. And, yeah, give all of those things a go. Um, let me know how that works. Just as a last thing to check, I'm going to pull up a graph of the motors. So this will give you a good picture of how well your craft's functioning overall. As you can see here, I've pulled this up all the way. So if we bring it back down, you know, your motors, I wouldn't assume they're getting hot. Like, they're vibrating, yes, but nothing crazy. And, you know, if we look at your filters, you know, if this scale pulled down quite a bit and we go back and look at gyro or pitch, you honestly don't have a whole lot of noise up here. That's the kind of noise that you can kind of get away with. And even if we just pull it up a little bit and then look at roll, I mean your, your D-term on roll, it's not that bad. So really, you can increase your filters. <coughs> you can kick those up. Like looking at this, your pitch is quite clean. You know, roll has... Just a little bit more noise. You can really up your filters. I think that will help um, doing that. And then if you look at your motors, these will pull up. Yeah, you can really see that there's spike of noise around 200 hertz. A bit above 200 hertz. And it's not happening to every motor. Not entirely sure why. But your motors do look pretty clean for the most part. Um, like I've been saying, I think that all you're going to have to do is really just not filter quite as much. Maybe play with your PID gains a little bit, do some real PID tuning on here, and I think you're going to, you know, have a quad that's flying quite well. On to the next victim. Here we have Eric Lowry. I hope I said that right, Eric. Um, you came and you said that you've tried literally everything to fix your problem. You've used three different ESCs, two different flight controllers, three new motors, got rid of soft mounting, TPU soft mount, still had twitches out of nowhere. You set the DMAG to high, 48 kilohertz, and 45% ramp up power. 24 kilohertz, and that's on the gyro. Not the gyro, that's on the ESC. Um, that helped out a little bit, but the motor still sounded thrashy. So I've seen his video. In his video, it almost looks like he's desyncing as he's flying around. So oh, I've already got that downloaded. I didn't mean to click that. You can remember this is the easy FPV, and that's this log. So, just a quick thing, pull up this log, take a look, he's flying the Strix F10. This is the date the firmware was built. So we already know this is version 0.2.0. If I come down here, I'm correct, it's version 0.2.0. It's running IMUF 213, <coughs> and here's his setup. So, first thing that I would say is update the latest version or wait until the newer version comes out because hopefully it won't take way too long and we'll have that out. There's 
a few fixes, a few improvements, it should just be better. Um, and if you look back at these D-term Dian LPF filters, and there should be a gyro one, those were bad filters, do not use them. And he is not, which is good. He's using feathered pids at zero, which means he's doing D-term from error. It's something to keep in mind. And then something to keep in mind is because he's running that older version and he's on a Helio type flight controller. He will not be able to use dynam the dynamic filter, which after the new update you will be able to with the Helio flight controller. Or something else to note is the D-term low pass filters. The low pass filter 2 cutoff does nothing. Absolutely nothing. So the only filter is running is this filter on the D-term. Um, this has been fixed in version 3. The low pass filter does indeed, low pass filter 2 for the D-term does indeed work. Did not in earlier versions. That just came over from Butterfly. Now we look at things, his PIDs look default to me, they look stock. So I don't think he's done any tuning whatsoever. Taking it out of the box. He's running D-Shot 1200. And we can see here that he's running 16 kilohertz. <coughs> so first thing, I'm going to move to this one, which is 33 seconds. It would be nicer to have a longer log than 33 seconds, but we'll see what we what kind of information we can get from this. Um, first thing I'm going to do is look at the RC command, because I'm guessing this will be a bit jumpy. Yeah, and as we can see here, the RC command, it's not looking horrible, but you can still see that it's kind of jumping around. It's not super smooth. So I would still recommend you also go to the Emu Flight Wiki on the GitHub and input those um, RC filtering commands. That should help smooth this out, <coughs> give you better RC filtering, especially because you're using your feathered pids at zero, which changes your D-term. And I'm going to easily be able to show you that here. So let's just get roll, take a look at roll. Um, now I'm actually going to smooth this just so I can see things a little bit better. Sometimes the noise just gets in your way. So if I look at the D-term here, it's just, you know, there's just mad D-term noise everywhere. Now here's what I wanted to show you. Um, graph setup, I gotta change this. Set point roll, there we go. So you see how the set point here is jumping. That once again is making the P-term jump and the D-term is jumping even worse now that he's doing D-term from error. But you can see it's tracking the gyro very well. Very well. If we look back here at this earlier log where feathered pins was at 100, the... Um, I had it on pitch, didn't I? The tracking is not as well because D-term is not helping you to track. Yeah, so you can see here there's more of a lag and delay between your stick movement. That's because you're running feathered pits at 100. Um, changing that will help. Um, if you want it to feel better, rate dynamics will kind of fix that. So I wouldn't really worry about this much delay in movement because we have you know, other ways that we can deal with this much delay, such as rate dynamics. It can essentially take away the feeling of this delay, um, even though you still have it. So I wouldn't really worry too much about that. However, here you can see that because this is jumpy, it's just making stuff jumpy. Uh, but we can see here, you're not getting overshoot. I mean, here's something weird happened. You know, and the, the P term goes crazy. The I term even goes up quite a bit trying to fight things. And this is probably one of those desync type like moments that he was talking about. <coughs> yeah, and you can see here, it just really is not helping. We turn off the expo, it'll look a bit better, a bit more realistic. We turn off the filtering there. Yeah, and you can see that just 
fixing your filtering here. It'll give you a smoother flight. This, this whole jumpy little bit, it'll be a lot better. And in future versions of Yuma Flight, we'll have better transmitter filtering. Um, things are going to be getting better. But we can see it doesn't look like he has any overshoot. So he's doing flips and no overshoot. So that is good. We don't want overshoot. It looks like he has none, which is exactly what we're looking for. <coughs> so next I'm going to actually look at the gyro, take a look at the noise that's being produced. make that full screen so we can see it better. You can see the noise goes all the way up to 2000 hertz. We really don't need that much so I'm going to zoom in my window so I can only see 500 hertz and lower. That's really all you need to see. Looking at this, the gyro is quite clean. There's noise down here but this is movement and then it's just clean. Now this gyro notch, which he may or may not have turned on, is it's not going to be doing anything with this Helio flight controller. Um, it will be able to work in the future, but especially not on version 2 and higher versions. Now we come here and look at the D-term. That is actually kind of noisy compared to his gyro. <coughs> See, the gyro here looks fairly clean, fairly good. Um, and then the D-term, once that pulls up, seems to have a fair bit of noise. Now, let's take a look at the motors. See what they look like. <laughs> now this, here we go. This is exactly why you're having desync type issues. When you have this much noise, especially at these higher frequencies, going right into the gyro, that really hurts. You're, that can cause your gyro to desync. It can cause all sorts of bad things. <clears throat> all sorts of unhappiness. Um, this lower frequency noise, under 100 hertz, it's not generally much of a problem. The motors are generally fairly noisy, but then you come here, this peak of noise up here. This is not what you want at all. So where's that noise coming from? Well, an easy way to see is if we get a graph of the, we make a custom graph and we grab the PID sum. Now here's something kind of cool to notice is if we look at the PID sum for roll, once that loads, PID sum for pitch. And the PID sum for yaw. The motor noise is kind of the accumulation of the noise here just multiplied. So if your PID sums are clean, which granted these PID sums all look fairly clean once they load up except for pitch here pitch appears to have some nasty noise right here fairly nasty that is not something you want and that's where if we look at the motors that's where the motor noise is coming from is pitch because we looked at roll, roll was pretty clean. Over pitch, it has this awful noise on it. <laughs> because I've been able to see its pitch, I'm going to grab specifically pitch and start looking at that. To see if I can see anything that looks odd on pitch. So let's take a look at the pitch gyro. Now you can see here, the pitch gyro actually does have a spike of noise here. Now let's do frequency versus throttle. Wait for that to load. I have to click on it again. All right, 
give me a sec, this is the deep term, I want to look at the gyro first, switching types usually causes weird things for a second until it's actually switched, this is, as you can see your PID D, I want to look at the gyro first, <coughs> see what the gyro looks like with throttle, come on, there we go, and you can see here, if I look at it, there's not really a, um, I can't see much of a motor band. I'm trying to move this slider until I can see the motor band. I can kind of see the motor band here. Just maybe barely. However, right here, see this noise? It's just constant. Nothing is changing it. <laughs> just constant noise right here. Your pitch gyro is either, you know, your pitch gyro either has some hardware problems giving you noise right here at about 300 hertz, or your frame is resonating at about 300 hertz. Because it seems regardless, of throttle. I'm going to take a look at roll, see if roll has some similar noise. If it does, then it's likely that it's frame resonance and not gyro issues. However, you've tried two different flight controllers, <coughs> and here you can actually see the motor noise a bit better. But because you've used two different gyros, I'm going to assume that it's not a issue with your gyro. So you've tried two, they've had the same issue. I'm going to assume that your frame has some resonance to it. Now, how can you fix frame resonance? Well, a few things you can do is get a different frame. That's not what you want to hear. You can tight, make sure all the screws are tight on your stack, that the frame is tight, there's nothing loose, nothing wiggling around. Make sure that nothing is able to touch the flight controller all of that stuff. And then what I would do is, um, you know, update to the latest EMU flight. It'll probably fly a little bit better with similar settings. And I would, once we release our new version, update your Strix flight controller and stick a notch filter right here. Stick a gyro notch right at 300 hertz. That will crush that noise that will greatly help out your gyro, help out your motors. They won't hate you as much. Life will be better that way. Um, yeah, and things will just run better. As far as your filters go, um, I'm going to take another look at your D-term. Once that loads. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, you can really see the motor band here. So if you're really concerned about this noise, once the new version comes out that allows the dynamic notch to work on Helio, turn that on. If you're concerned about this noise, it will disappear. You can still run 1616 and, and then use the dynamic notch. It'll completely get rid of that noise. <coughs> It'll just disappear. Set your matrix Q to about 400 to 450 and that noise will be gone. Um, interesting. Looking at it now, I can kind of see, looks like there's some noise here. Maybe this is part of the frame resonance. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know, but we're looking at your D term. Um, I'm going to pull back to frequency mode as it seemed, it's just easier to look at filters when you're in frequency mode easier to troubleshoot other things. Yeah, you can see the D-term is kicking at some of these low frequencies. Some of those low frequencies, you just can't filter them. So you might want to set your D-term LPF a bit higher, see if that helps at all. If it doesn't, stick it lower again. Um, if you want to try something a bit more experimental, but you've proven it works, 
um, is if you update to IMUF 230 and the latest version of EMU flight, you can actually set your IMUF filters down to 10 hertz. You, you really can. You'll just have to set your sharpness, your IMUF sharpness in version 0 0.3. You'll just have to increase that to say 5,000 or 6,000. And you can actually run your IMUF low pass at 10 hertz. And the reason is because it's a, the IMUF low pass is actually a dynamic filter. And running it at 10 hertz, it's generally not actually at 10 hertz. It's generally higher than that. But the sharpness makes the filter more dynamic, and you can actually run it down to 10 hertz, and it flies fine. Um, it's something you can give a go, but I'd say, um, you know, if you're going to keep running the Helios Spring, wait for an update. I might even send you a hex that will allow you to stick a notch filter on there. Um, but stick a notch filter on your pitch. You know, look for any mechanical vibrations, anything mechanical that might be messing you up at all. Try that. Um, just as a general word of advice, I'd say less yaw D-term. Um, you know, perhaps play with a few presets. You know, things look pretty good besides that pitch issue. Um, play with maybe a few presets, but change the filters. Um, stick a notch filter, though, on pitch at about 300 hertz. And I'll just show you that again. It'll make a lot of sense. And that'll really, yeah, this noise here sticking a notch that will help um, but your little desync things just really make sure everything's tight and good give that a go let me know how that works and moving on to the last one I have no idea how long this video is so far I don't even know how to check cool. moving on to the last one Christian Collado <coughs> says he has a small amount of prop wash he thinks it's his flying um, cool. So I've seen this video. I've seen him flying. Um, I didn't really see much prop wash in the video. I did see a little bit of bounce back in his video on roll when he was doing quick rolls. So once again, first thing, I'm going to come look here. Look at all of this. He's running quite a high D term. Um, He's definitely on a 5-inch. He was carrying a GoPro. That D-term might be part of the problem with it being so high. <clears throat> Starting to make things unhappy. Um, trying to find feathered pids. Feathered pids under. So he's doing D-term from gyro. Um, he's running some smart smoothing. Um, you got to find a happy balance with this to get it to work right, so that might be some of his issue. He's running some extra witchcraft, he might not need that. Um, yeah, that's just my first impression. I'm UFW at 64. He'll probably be able to get away with less than that. Let me just now take a look at the log. Those are just my first impressions from looking at his settings, some common things that might be a problem. Now, like I said before, I saw a little bit of overshoot, you know, a little bit of bounce back on roll. That could have also just been his sticks. Um, so I'm going to change this to set point roll. Okay, see if we get rid of that expo, it looks real smooth here. Let's keep going. And here we go. <coughs> look at that, that is quite stepped. Yeah, look at... I really doubt you're moving your sticks like this. Very stepped. Um, once again, I'd recommend you go um, check out the GitHub page and find the smoothing, the RC smoothing settings. Give those a go. <coughs> yes, and I was correct. I did see some bounce back. You can see here, 
this bounce back is I term related. So to fix that, you're probably going to want to run less I term or less D term <coughs> or potentially even more P. As we can see, your I term just accumulates because you have all this error here. Smoothing out your sticks will help with this error because it won't be so jumpy. <coughs> then here there's all this error and the I term accumulates like mad because you have right here 200 degrees per second error. At this moment you just have a ridiculous, you know, almost, you know, 650 degree error right there. It's just ridiculous. You can see your P term is just to the moon huge here, pushing super hard. I bet that the motors are completely maxed out here. Uh, that's not what I wanted to do. There we go, motors. Yeah. You've, yeah, you've maxed out the motors. Just boom. Yeah, as we can see here at the start of the flip, you go up and because of how jagged it is, you see right here, it slows down. It almost, your motors almost stop, then they shoot back up, and that's because you have this jagged set point. So fixing your jagged set point will really come in handy here. Yeah, you'll, you'll really be enjoying having a smoother. <laughs> so right here, you see your eye term is accumulating too much. Um, in the next release version coming out, we have better ways of handling the I-term and getting it to work better. So that's something you can be looking forward to. Um, for now, you can run less D-term, which would slow the lagginess of your um, gyro, which would mean, that's not what I meant, and it would mean that your I term would accumulate less because there'd be less lag between set point and gyro. That would help. You can also, there's a, um, <coughs> you know, you can play with the um, SPA roll, not the SPA, you can play with your SPA I, set that a bit lower, that'll decrease your I as you increase your sticks. Um, however, that's not going to help you the most as you know your sticks are near the center here and your I term is really increasing. There's this CLI command. It's um let me actually find that for you. Um I term wind up. <coughs> Is this it? No, that's not what I want. Here we go. Wind up point percent. <coughs> yes. Here we go. Settings. Haha. -ha. Right here. There's this I term wind up variable. Default is 50. However, setting the value higher will prevent more I term wind up. So default is 50. If you try 70 or 80, even 90, I actually can set it to as 99 currently. Beta flight's a bit different. Um, set the I term wind up to, you know, over 50. Just increase your I term wind up until this kind of disappears. <coughs> and that'll really help stop this growth in your I term. So that's what I'd do here to kind of help with those bounce backs is increase your I term wind up. Wow, I did not mean to do that. I would increase your I term wind up and that would help with these little bounce backs. Now, let's take a look at why your motors have all this noise and your D-term has all this noise. <sighs> Come
Come on. Okay, here we go. Roll D kind of has a fair bit of noise. Then we come look at the gyro. It's pretty clean, doing quite well. Let's look at the settings again. You do indeed have the dynamic filter on. And your settings are like such. Now, looking at the settings, something I would try is setting the witchcraft to zero, smart smoothing to zero, and then coming in here, after setting all those to zero, lowering your derivative term. Your D term is almost as high as you, it's even higher than your P term. That's not normal for a five inch quad. For whoops or other larger quads, that can be more normal, but for a five inch quad, that's not really normal. So you can see the gyros, they have this, you know, this noise, it goes up a little bit down back up towards these higher values. And we look at the D term. And it has that same movement, but way exaggerated. And as such, if you're just to decrease your D term, you'd be seeing that disappear a lot more. So that's something I'd look at is lowering your derivative term. Because if you were trying to increase D to stop these bounce backs, that's not going to help. It's actually going to hurt because the D term is going to slow down your gyro. And that's going to help I term to grow and cause more bounce back. So that's something I would look at is lowering your, um, yeah, lowering your D term. Um, that might even help with prop washes. Your D term might be kicking too high during some prop wash situations. Um, what else do we have? You have a settings. Yeah, your IMUFW. You've set that to 64. Looking at your gyro, I, you know, I just feel that for your five inch quad and for what you're doing, you'd be happy lowering that to, you know, 32 or even 16, and then taking your um, sharpness, possibly decreasing it. You have sharpness at about 8,000. You have it at 8,000 actually. Probably decreasing that, increasing your Q a bit more. That can help with prop wash. Um, you know, your gyro low pass, you've got them at 115 hertz. You know, you, you can get away with increasing those a bit more. Especially once you decrease your D term, you'll be able to increase some of your filters. Um, you might even be able to increase your D term filters once you... Um, make those suggestions. So right now for your quad, I would suggest you fix your RC smoothing, get your set point looking cleaner, um, getting rid of witchcraft and smart smoothing. If that doesn't help, put them back on, but I'd suggest getting rid of those. Increasing D-term roll, you know, possibly increasing these a little bit, but I wouldn't touch those to start off. Um, I'd probably increase these to 130, maybe a little higher. Increase Q, decrease W, lower sharpness to about 2,500 or 3,000. Um, I'd do all of those things as well as just making your derivative a lot smaller, like 40 or even in the 30s. Um, and you'll probably find that those values work better. You might need to lower your P term a little bit. Um, if you are experiencing prop wash, um, Emu Boost can actually help with prop wash. So I would increase your Emu Boost and Emu Boost limit. You know, if you're asking how high can I increase it, you know, a safe value that I've been using before has been, you know, 500 plus for the boost and 150 plus for the limit. 
So really, if you wanted to, you could max out those values without running into any real problems. And so that would be my main um, suggestions here. Um, if you guys have questions about some of these things, you know, if you have questions about how to tune, how to use black box logs, which are what I've been talking about, um, yeah, just, yeah, really, your D-term needs to, you need to be using less derivative. But yeah, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. Um, I was thinking I would edit this video. I'm not feeling like it right now, so this will be an unedited, unedited video. Um, I hope it helps. Um, I hope you enjoy seeing me fumble around a little bit. But these are my general suggestions, seeing the log. Um, and yeah, logs can be quite helpful. Um, the RC smoothing, the defaults are actually changing in the next version. So those settings that are on the wiki, those will become default. So that should help out a lot of people, giving them better results out of the box. But yeah, um, yeah, the biggest thing that black box logging can do is help help you to pinpoint problems. Um, if you don't have problems, I wouldn't say that. You know, for me as a developer, as a tester, as a pilot myself, I don't generally grab logs and just go out and fly and if my quad doesn't have problems, just go to the black box and see what's wrong. I generally tune my quad using the OSD, just out in the field, tuning it, messing around with it, seeing what I have. And then by the time I'm done, usually by the time I'm done with the tuning session, I will make a log, come back and look at it, and then be able to fine tune things a bit better. You know, maybe there was a little bit of overshoot I didn't notice out flying, or maybe there was some noise I didn't see that I can really pinpoint with a notch or something else or whatever it might be. However, if your quad does have problems, a log will really help pinpoint those problems. <laughs> and so if I have a quad that has a problem, I will very quickly start looking at logs of that quad and try to pinpoint that problem and try to fix it. If I don't have any of those problems, then I won't go straight to the black box. I will just tune it by feel, by sound. You know, I'll increase the filters until it sounds bad. I'll check motor temps. If I increase the filters, increase the frequency of the filter so I, I use less filtering, and it starts to sound noisy and bad, I'll start to decrease those again. You know, I do kind of a trial and error type tuning with the OSD. It's, I'll go fly. I'll say, oh, I think I might need more D-term to help with this bounce back or whatever, or to help with prop wash. I'll then go put myself in some bounce back or prop wash moves, and I'll see, did it help? Yes or no? If it didn't help, I then revert back to what I was and possibly go the other direction. So if I thought, oh, I might need more D-term, I'm at 35, let's try 40, and that doesn't help, I'll then say, okay, 35... I went from 35 to 40, it got worse. Let's try 30. And so I'll go both directions. Oh, 30 was better? Perfect. I'll try that. And when I'm tuning with the OSD, I can literally be in the air for 10, 20 seconds and then land. And I can, you know, I can really be pounding out a tune and make lots of changes in a very short amount of time. <clears throat> and so that's my recommended way of tuning. Unless you, unless you have problems, definitely look at logs. Definitely see how it's doing. Um, something that I like to say is at the end of the day, if the logs look like crap, but you love the way your quad, your quad flies, who cares? Who cares what the logs look like if your quad's flying well? If your quad has a few problems and you can't seem to tune it, go use the black box. It's a great tool. I love it. It's great for helping test new code. Um you know, get new features out there. It's wonderful. It's incredible for that. Um, but for just general tuning, you don't really need it most of the time. You can get away without it. <coughs> for fine tuning, little things that you can't get quite perfect, that's where black box can come in. You have weird flight issues, that's where black box can really shine. Um, 
Yeah, I hope that helped you guys that sent the log. Sorry it took me a while to get um, done with this. But I hope you enjoy the video, even if it's a bit of a ramble and seems kind of boring. Um, I know some of you will eat it up, so I'll just post it all unedited. You can skip through as much of it as you want. Um, but thanks for watching, and have a good one, everyone. And enjoy flying Eagle Flight. See ya.